Hello, I am Robin Gardner, and this is a presentation on the therapeutic use of animals. Animal therapy is a blanket term involving different ways to include animals in the therapeutic process. Animal assisted therapy, AAT, is one main term used to describe goal directed interventions where animals are used as an integral part of treatment. Progress is measured and it is directed by an RT professional. The animals used in these treatments meet specific criteria and the interventions are delivered by a trained health or human service professional with specific individual goals for each participant. Animal assisted activities, AAA, are activities that include the interaction with animals to enhance the participant's quality of life, providing motivational, educational, recreational, and therapeutic benefits. These activities serve as a meet and greet with the animals with no predetermined individual therapeutic goals in place. Other terms used with therapeutic use of animals are resident animals, which are pets that live in human ser service facilities, such as nursing homes or assisted living facilities. These animals live there full time and are used as a morale bo booster within the community. Companion animals are household pets. Owning an animal is proven to improve health and happiness for individuals, although companion animals are not used for therapeutic outcomes. Service animals are specially trained dogs provided by independent agencies to help people with disabilities in everyday activities, movement, and travel. Different types of animals can be used in treatments, interventions, and activities, including dogs, cats, bunnies, and farm animals. Animals have long been used in society and therapy to promote feelings of comfort, joy, relaxation, and a sense of normalcy and well-being. Animal therapy can help promote feelings of empathy to help identify with and understand others, can bring outward focus to help people to focus on their environments. Animals can build a rapport between the therapist and the client, helping to create a safe, non-threatening line of communication. It promotes, it promotes nurturing towards other living things. It promotes feelings of acceptance. Animals have a natural, uncomplicated way of making a person feel accepted with no judgment. Promotes laughter and interaction between clients, staff, family, and other participants, encouraging socialization. It increases communication. Memories recalled and entertainment help to increase mental stimulation. Animals can provide safe, non-threatening, and pleasant physical contact where it might be a negative experience for other people. Many physiological benefits have been found with animal therapy, including reductions in blood pressure and heart rate. If nothing else, the presence of an animal can provide entertainment. As you can see, there are many benefits to the use of animals in therapy, activities, communities, and services. There is a long history of animals having a positive influence on people. Animals and people continue to present a strong bond which cannot be denied, providing man with transportation, protection, power, and companionship. The popularity that humans have to animals has been recorded throughout history. A therapeutic setting in Guild, Belgium during the 19th century provided the first documentation of the use of animals in treatment. There is later documentation of the use of animals in therapy in the late 1700s in England at a York retreat institution. Animals were used in psych psychiatric services to increase self-control and a sense of being. Farm animals were used for companionship and care with the psychological disorders, where the animals would become dependent on the people. In 1867 in Bethel, Germany, People diagnosed with epilepsy at a care facility were given similar treatments with the care of farm animals and wild game. In the United States, the first documented use of animal therapy was during the World War II in an Army Air Corps uh, convalescent hospital in New York. During these assisted animal therapy sessions, participants worked at the hospital's farm with hogs, cattle, horses, and chickens. In the 1960s, child psychiatrist Boris Levinson rallied with the use of animals for the use of animals as part of a child therapy treatment through published writings. Levinson argued the use of animals in therapy provided support and led to better social and emotional adjust adjustments. He outlined specific procedures for use during therapy sessions. 
In the 1960s and 1970s, therapeutic use of animals began to be researched. The use of animals to assist in therapy is used in a wide, wide variety of settings to help individuals with depression, autism, aphasia, social limitations, post-traumatic stress disorder, cerebral palsy, intellectual disabilities, dementia, and many more disabilities. Many organizations provide services for animal therapy with trained professionals to assist in the AAT programs. The organizations can be hired, some for profit, some are volunteers, by the RT specialist to provide animals and trained professionals to help provide the AAT service to particip participants. There are a variety of different ways that animals are used in AAT, including contact with am animals, which involves participants having animals available for physical contact by participants. Participants are able to hold and pet the animals. Some examples of therapeutic goals during contact with the animals are information recall, hand-eye coordination, and fine and gross motor skills. Caring for animals is a treatment approach which involves caring for animals and is often practiced with farm animals. Participants volunteer at an animal care program to groom, feed, and clean animals. Among people or children diagnosed with behavioral disorders, these practices can foster a sense of, nur of nurturance between the participant and the animals. Animals used in psychotherapy can help to improve the client-therapist relationship by building trust while providing the participant with a sense of calm and comforting, relaxed environment. The animals can be used as a dialogue starter, starter or can provide physical contact through petting and sitting with, with the participant during therapy. Other examples of AAT used are the use and manipulation of buckles, clasps, leashes, collars, and carriers to practice and control fine motor skills. The use of sequence of events can be practiced in therapy to, to include step-by-step -step instructions to be followed when handling animals, such as get the treat out of the bag, tell the dog to sit, give the dog a treat, tell the dog good boy. For a person who may have trouble standing, a dog or cat can be used as motivation by pull, pulling, putting the animal on a table and having them stand at the table while petting and brushing the animal. Walking the dog on a leash can also be used as motivation for walking and exercising. Each session should be carefully prepared for and, organi and organized. Prior to each session, the TR specialist should communicate with the animal therapy organization to obtain any information needed regarding the process, animal handlers, or the animals. They may also prove helpful to inform the animal handlers of the session's goals for participants. Days, times, rooms, or space needed, supplies or materials needed, and types of animals are all top topics of discussion to be to be had between the TR specialist and the organization prior to the session. It is a good idea to prepare the participants for animal therapy sessions before it occurs. Once the session is in process, have participants gather around in an area large enough for ease of movement and comfort for participants, handlers, and an animals. Sessions should be 30 to 60 minutes and should not occur during other regularly scheduled events. Often the animals are rotated or moved around the room so that participants can take adequate time with each animal presented. No formal theories have been presented for the therapeutic use of animals. However, there are two explanations presented to understand how therapeutic use of animals might work. They are the human-animal bond and the prolonged exposure. The human-animal bond is the basis for people's desires to be with animals. It is the idea that our natural environment includes animals and that the inclusion of animals into therapy sessions influences people physically and mentally. The use of animals in therapy is said to be an extension of the natural bond between a pet and its owner. With this bond, it is believed that people have an innate need for affiliation with animals and the animals are intrinsically therapeutic. It is said that animals have natural characteristics for therapy such as unconditional love and protection. Prolonged exposure is an emergence from treatment involving animals and therapy with people experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder. Treatments for PTSD involving prolonged exposure for the patients to recall repeatedly that event, causing fear, increased anxiety, and treatment abandonment. 
In this theoretical model, animal-assisted therapy was used during prolonged exposure sessions to help the individual tolerate stress. For the participants, if the participants feel stress during the session, they are encouraged to play and interact with the animal along with breathing exercises to help relieve stress and anxiety. For this activity, using therapeutic use of animals, I will explain how to use animals during an animal-assisted therapy session. This activity involves their participants grooming the animals using brushes and petting and stroking the animals. To prepare for the session, the TR specialist should start by explaining the organization and the animal handler and the animal handler teams that will be joining them. Explain to the participants that the animals coming to visit have all been specially trained and screened to emphasize their safety with the animals. Explain the relationship between the handlers and their animals. For instance, if the handlers own them animals as their pets or if they borrow, were borrowed from local shelters. Show photographs of the animals that will be visiting and give a short bio of each animal. Information in this bio can include the name, breed, or activities enjoyed. Describe the activities that are to be performed and that are planned. For this activity, we will be petting and stroking the animal as well as using tools to brush them. Once an explanation of the activity has been given, the participants can participate in a warm-up session prior to this activity. This can be done the day before or hours before the activity, or even directly before it. TR specialists should start with a discussion about animals, encouraging them to discuss animals and their own personal experiences with them. Ask participants if they have ever owned a pet, and if so, what type of animal it was what their and what their name was. Ask them about other friends or family members' pets. Tell them to think about some of the characteristics of their pets and other people's pets that they know. Can they think of a funny story about that pet? Ask them if they would what, ask them if they like that pet. What did they like about it or dislike about it? Next, give participants a piece of paper and write materials and writing materials and have them draw a picture of an animal or a pet. Discuss with them the qualities of the pet that they have drawn. Now it's time to visit with the animals. Before the handlers and animals have arrived, have the participants gather in the open area for the visitation. Have the participants sit in a chair and the animals can be placed either on their laps or on a table top or surface for easy access to the animals. Have the participants pet, stroke, or soothe the animals. Give the participants brushes so that they can brush the animals. Toys can also be used to play with the animals or treats can be hand to be Treats can be, can be hand-fed to the animals. Encourage all participants to participate in handling the animals, but do not force it. It might be helpful to have life-size stuffed animals to use in place of real animals if the participants are not comfortable handling the live animals. They can still hold, stroke, pet, or brush the stuffed animals. Keep asking and encouraging them to switch the, to the live animals. In the event that participants have less cerebral cerebrovascular ac an accident, a CVA, adaptations can be made to encourage use of their right hand to brush the animal. Feed the animal's treats or pet or stroke the animal to help gain strength that, weak that the weak extremity in that weak extremity and develop grasping fine and gross motor skills. Coordination, range of motion, and sense of touch can be practiced in the actions to stroke, pet, or hug the animals. Playing with toys with the animals can help to gain hand-eye coordination and receptive language skills can be used as instructions are followed to properly play with and care for the animals. In the event that participants have experienced a brain injury, animal therapy can help, to participate, help the participant with attention span and increased ability to follow directions by asking the participants to complete tasks one at a time. You can also ask the participant to focus their attention solely on one animal at a time for increased attention span, completing a task before moving on to another animal. Recall skills can be, can be promoted by asking the participant details about the animal, such as their name or age. In the event that participants are experiencing disability in the hip, knee, or leg injuries, they can have weaknesses in those areas and activities to gain strength in upper and lower extremities such as grasping and holding on to the animal's harness can be used. They can stand at a table to care for the animal with the assistance of a walker or cane if needed if needed. 
or throw a ball for the animal to fetch while they are standing. The participants can also walk with the animals on a loose lease for exercise. I hope that you have enjoyed this presentation on the therapeutic use of animals.